Hey, I just wanted to give a quick thanks to one of our sponsors of the Simple Program, which is Dev Mountain Bootcamp. You should go check them out. The link is in the description. They are a coding bootcamp and they can teach you web development, iOS development, UX design, a lot of good stuff. I get a lot of feedback from a lot of you out there that email me and have told me about Dev Mountain, so I decided to check them out myself. And I, I like what I found. I like their programs. They offer uh, some 12 week intensive programs. They also offer some after hours programs, which I know that some of you will like. So go check them out. You can see the link in the description below, Dev Mountain Bootcamp, and a big thank you to them for sponsoring Simple Programmer. Hey, what's up, John Sonmez here from simpleprogrammer.com. So I wanted to do a video about creating videos, about creating tutorials specifically. I have a lot of experience in this. If you haven't checked them out already, you can check out my 55 courses on Pluralsight here, yes. So I have created a lot of tutorial video courses. Why haven't you seen any? Why haven't you seen any lately? Because that's not what I'm doing now. Now I'm doing personal development for software developers. I make software developers cool. So if you want to be cool, you know, you watch this channel and you learn how to be a cool software developer or just, you know, how to grow as a person. But I did want to talk about this subject because I see, I know that a lot of you, you're not going to do what I'm doing, right? I mean, I, 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 I'm in front of the camera a lot. I'm doing more soft skills type of stuff, right? I'm the soft skills guy for software developers, whatever you want to call me, the guy with the big guns on YouTube, as, as, as some of you say. But, but here's the thing. A lot of you are doing video tutorials, okay? Or you're creating online courses, which is great. You know, if you, if you want to uh, hear my thoughts on, on why you should be doing this and how to make some money and stuff, uh, you can check out my free blogging course. Definitely sign up there if you haven't created a blog and everything like that. I am eventually gonna put out a developer to entrepreneur course and talk more in depth about creating courses and doing this kind of stuff. But it, it can be really helpful to you, right? It can be really helpful to your career, even just doing video tutorials on YouTube. But a lot of people do this wrong. They get it wrong. So I'm not gonna get too much into the weeds, into the technical details. I, as I always speak in principles here on Simple Programmer, I'm gonna be talking about the higher level principles, but I feel like this will help some of you that are struggling with creating courses, creating interesting video tutorials, just some of the things I've learned from creating, like I said, over 55 courses, a plural site, you know, two to three hour long courses on technical topics, highly technical topics, and keeping them entertaining and, and keeping people engaged so that, you know, I get emails all the time where people say, hey, John, you know, your plural site courses were the most interesting and I learned a lot and, and I actually paid attention. So I, I, wanna, I wanna share with you some of those secrets and, you know, maybe if you're interested, I'll eventually do maybe more in-depth and actually show you some of the tools and editing, but you know, really the tooling and stuff is not so important. It's always really important that you understand the principles behind things, because if you understand the principles, then the application becomes simple, right? And some people just say they want the tactics, they just want the, the, the details, and I understand that, but you know, those, those things are the simple thing, right? That's, you can always figure that stuff out. Someone can give you that information, you can Google that. I, I'm, I'm here to tell you the stuff that most people aren't gonna tell you in life, which is the, the higher level principle. At least, that's what I like to think uh, that I do, okay? So, let's talk about some, some of the elements of, of creating a video course. So the first thing, if you create a tutorial, right, one of the things that's really, really important is that you tell people where you're gonna go or you show them the finished product or you give them the process, right? Before you go on a journey with me, I, you, I, gotta, I gotta tell you where I'm going, right? So it's really important that you, you state it. You say, okay, here's what we're gonna build, here's what we're gonna do, here's what we're gonna learn, here's the process that we're gonna take to get there so that you, they understand and they're gonna stick with you to, towards the end. Even just in this video, this isn't a technical video, but I, I preface this whole thing or prefaced it by, by telling you what I'm gonna basically talk about, what we're gonna do so that you can say, okay, yeah, he's gonna get to that. This is what, he, what he's gonna talk about. So I think it's really important to not just jump in and say, hey, I'm, I'm just gonna start coding this, this thing. You, you've gotta say that upfront. What, what are you gonna do? Now, next, next important tip here that I'll give you is that your voice and how you say things and how you come across is very, very important. Technical shit can be boring ass shit. I'll say it again, technical shit can be boring ass shit. See what I'm doing when I'm making a rhythm. You, okay, so I, I'm not saying always speak in a rhythm, but what I am saying is that make your voice interesting. Be excited, go up in volume, go low in volume, right? Use these things, have you ever seen The Wonder Years? I, I'm dating myself here, but there, there was 
was a, a professor on the Wonder Years, and he would be talking in this monotone voice. And now we're going to look at dissecting a frog. And he, he was so boring, right? He would make people fall asleep. You don't want to be that, right? It's, it's the same thing goes for, for YouTube. When I am doing a video for you guys, usually I'm jumping around. I'm pretty fucking excited. I'm telling you stuff. My voice is showing my excitement, right? There, there was this thing that AT&T did a while ago, this program about like smiling while, while talking when they're, they're doing customer service training and it makes a difference. You gotta have a big ass smile on your face. So when you're recording a tutorial video, right? Even if you're not doing the camera. Now, I recommend that you do some camera stuff that you actually let people see you, okay? With the worst possible tutorial, okay? Bar none is some computer generated voice, right? That where, where the person is so afraid, of, they're not just afraid of showing themselves on camera, they're afraid of having their actual voice be on YouTube or their tutorial, that they use some kind of computer generated voice or something like that. That's horrible, 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 horrible. People love people. <laughs> That's why there's a People magazine, okay? People want people. That's what's interesting. So make sure that your voice is interesting. If you can get on the camera and do a little segment on the camera, even the introduction to your course, that is great. That's going to help. If you can do the little thing in the bottom of the corner of the screen where they can watch you while you're coding, right? That is cool as well. That's that's probably going to help out. But I prefer to do some, some live segments when, when you're talking. Explain something that you can be in front of the camera that you can show expression, right? Don't be afraid to be funny. Don't be afraid to show some personality. It doesn't have to be, just because it's a technical topic, doesn't mean that you have to be all monotone and you have to be all serious and seem like you're such a high and flutant acad academic person, right? You can be a down to earth person. One of the reasons why my, my book, okay, this, this is a, a different medium, but it still applies, soft skills, okay? If you haven't gotten it, get it. Uh, but the, one of the reasons why it was so popular and it was so popular in a lot of different countries. I've got Japanese, Korean, Chinese version here. I've got the Polish version here. But one of the reasons why that it transcended all of those cultures and languages is because the, the way that I phrase things, the verbiage that I use, I'm your buddy. I'm your friend here and I'm teaching you something and I'm, I'm alongside you. I'm not looking down on you and telling you how dumb you are and trying to make myself to be real smart. And that's what you want to come across in your videos. When you're teaching people stuff, re remember, no one likes to be lectured. What people like to do is like, hey, I'm your buddy, I'm helping you out. Like, let, let's, you know, let, let's learn this together. Let's figure this shit out. I don't have all the answers, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna share with you what I know. Present that when you, when you come across in your videos. It's really important, like I said, even in these technical topics. Next, editing. Editing is really important. Well, actually, let's, and, and, and let's, let's zoom back a little bit. And, and the first step to editing is to having good quality source material. So that means when you record a tutorial on your screen, pay attention to screen resolution, right? If you record at 1080 and you're going to distribute the videos at 1080, that's great, but how big is the text on there, right? Maybe you should do 720 or 480. I, I mean, you can do 1080, but you got to have the text zoomed in. You got to think about how that's, how that's going to be, right? And if you've got a 4K display, then you, you could actually cut out different parts of it, right? You can zoom in. There's a lot of video tools that will allow you to do stuff like that, but think about this ahead of time. Run some tests and make sure, obviously, make sure you've got a good frame rate as well. Same thing with audio. Audio, your source needs to be clear and crisp. Test your audio, okay? I've got a bunch of panels in my office here for, for doing these YouTube videos and for recording because I need to have good sound quality. I didn't always have good sound quality. You can look at some of my older videos. Uh, in fact, my voice was not always so good, okay? As some of you have pointed out, but I, I, I worked on that a little bit. I mean, it kind of naturally changed, but we're not getting into the details on that. You can see the video. I've got on my voice change. I don't have an exact answer for you. But if I were to coach myself now, I would have said, John, get a damn voice coach. Like, figure this out. Like, you, you sound like a, a, a like a prepubescent girl <laughs> when you're talking in some of your videos. Uh, that's that's not, not really cool. Okay, but so source audio is really important, having high quality so that you can, you can edit that. And also, again, Maybe you got a radio announcer voice. We talked about the expression and stuff that that's really important as well. But then, okay, once you have that source, 
Editing is really important. You can do a lot of magic with editing. There's no reason why you should have a bunch of ums and ahs in your tutorial video and why you should have dead space. You know what I'm talking about, about dead space? It means that like if one or two seconds pass by and it's just dead space, there's nothing, you should cut that out. Use the editor. Try to make it flow as much as possible, right? You, if you make people wait and you've got these long pauses and you've got ums in there, bunch of transition words, stuff like that, it's gonna be annoying. It's gonna be really difficult for people to listen to you, okay? So that, those are really the, the main main things as far as the presentation, that it's gonna make a big difference. Another thing I would say also is that slides, okay, just a couple of bullet points on the slide is usually not very interesting. Can you have a, a picture? Can you have diagrams? Something that's gonna be visually appealing. You don't have to do all kinds of crazy animations and things like that. If you're doing coding tutorials, you should probably be mostly in the code, showing examples there, that's gonna catch people's interest. But if you have to explain a higher level concept, one, I wanna see, can you do it in front of a camera? Because if you can, that's gonna be better, and you can do stuff like you can point here, and bam, like uh, you know, a shape could show up, or something like that, right? Editing is magic, right? You can go in and use tools, Camtasia was one that I was using for a while, but you know, Adobe Premiere, there's a lot of different tools, and you can make stuff appear, right? You know, if, if Rodrigo's listening real carefully to this video, he will make a chicken appear right here. Bam, just like that, right between my hands, okay? If he's not listening very well, he didn't do that, but I think he, I think he, I'm gonna say this a bunch of times so that a chicken does appear here, and, and we'll see what happens, but there's power and magic in that, okay? So there's a lot of stuff that you can do. You can do highlighting and call outs. You know, think about how best to present and make it easier for your listener or your watcher to, to understand and digest the material. With the material itself, I would, I would highly recommend that when you build a course, when you build tutorials, that you build real world type of things where you get your, you're actually building something and coming up with a finished product. To remember, people want the end result, they don't want the process. So if it's learning JavaScript, Great, I don't need to learn JavaScript. What I need to do is to learn how to build this JavaScript application or this web page. JavaScript is the way that I get there. Your tutorial is what's helping them. So show them what they're gonna be able to do. Show them what the end product is. Make them excited about it and, and take them the steps along the way. All right, that's some basic tips. If you've got some questions, leave them below in the comment section. I'm happy to answer. Like I said, I've spent thousands thousands of hours, literally, recording, editing video, making courses, and, and I'll probably spend thousands more making YouTube videos, but uh, I, I'm happy to answer any questions. And if you're interested, you know, I, I've got a lot of course ideas. I'll probably do something more on, on creating these kind of technical courses and things like that. And I appreciate you watching this. <laughs> And I would implore you to click the subscribe button if you haven't already. And I will talk to you next time. Take care and have fun creating non-boring courses, please.